Saudi Arabia is working on the line, the most ambitious mega project the world has ever seen. Satellite images and drone videos revealed that for the past few months they've been digging the foundations. But now, big rumor has started to spread. The line is getting significantly smaller than originally planned. Could this be the beginning of the end for the line? And will the line be abandoned altogether? I'm Regis, and today we'll take a look at exactly what's been going on. The line was first announced back in 2021 by Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. Honestly, by now you probably know about it, but here's a quick reminder just in case. The plans for this project show a futuristic city, 500 meters from top to bottom, and stretching a total of 170 kilometers through the Saudi Arabian desert. Building it would be the equivalent of building 2,800 One World Trade Centers and lining them all up in a row. Doing all that, and then doubling it. That's 5,600 One World Trade Centers in total. This colossal structure would accommodate almost 10 million people. There wouldn't be any cars or greenhouse emissions, and the entire city would be run on renewable energy. The line would also be equipped with cutting-edge artificial intelligence. This system would track things like criminal activity and send security forces to deal with incidents in real time. It's all part of a wider Saudi Arabian project called NEOM. Along with the line, they're also building other stunning mega projects like the Trojina Winter Resort, the Oxagon Port City, and the Sindala Luxury Island. And just a few months ago, they announced some other projects too, including giant hotels like Epicon, an upside down skyscraper called Aquellum, and this incredible venue carved into the face of a mountain known as Utamo. If you'd like to hear more about those, we actually did a video about them back in March, so go check that out. When you look at all these NEON projects, it really does feel like you're looking at something from the future. But it has to be said, when projects like The Line were first announced, everyone asked, will any of this actually happen? Plenty of people rolled their eyes at The Line. They thought it was just a publicity stunt, a bunch of 3D renders and massive promises that wouldn't ever really go anywhere. We've seen this time and time again in the world of mega projects, And maybe they were right. We'll get to that a little bit later. But as of last year, and to everyone's surprise, work actually got underway. These satellite images showed excavation work underway. And not just small ones either. It looked as though teams were digging at the foundations of the entire line at once. A stretch of 170 kilometers. Heck, it was visible from outer space. While the rest of Niam is meant to be finished by 2030, that was never the plan for the line. This project was due to be completed in stages, which could each take 30 years to build. But Saudi Arabia wanted part of the line to be completed by 2030, enough for 1.5 million residents to move in. Those satellite images were followed by official drone footage. As recently as February 2024, Niam showed off the massive site, boldly calling it the world's biggest earthworks operation. Representing the world's biggest earthworks operation. However, that was two whole months ago now, and in the last few weeks, some rumors have been spreading. Is the line still going to plan? Here's what people are saying. Neom has been forced to downsize the project and turn the line into something much smaller, a so-called mini line, about 2.4 kilometers long. That's barely 2% of the original proposed length, with only enough space for about 300,000 residents. In other words, well, maybe the experts were right. Shocking, I know. Maybe the original plans were too ambitious. 18 months ago, we actually made another video about the line and wondered whether Saudi Arabia would end up building it not at the insane lengths they envisioned. Said Saudi Arabia could build it, but not at the insane lengths they envisioned. This mini line is exactly the kind of thing that we imagined back then. Later, we'll see what this mini line might actually look like. But just to be clear, this downsizing hasn't been officially confirmed by Neon. Instead, the story was broken by Bloomberg in April of this year. They claimed to have seen some secret documents relating to the project after speaking to an inside source. According to this source, who asked not to be named, the downsized line would mainly be down to a lack of available cash. The original project was expected to cost in the region of a trillion US dollars. But as of September 2023, Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, the most significant backer of the NEOM project, had less than 20 billion available. That's the lowest they've had in years, partly because they've been spending so much on NEOM. 
but also because oil prices have been struggling. And that's kind of the country's main source of income. And if you're getting deja vu, that's because this all sounds a bit like the Jeddah Tower, another Saudi Arabian mega project that we've mentioned in recent videos. This tower was supposed to become the tallest building in the world, but in 2018, the project was stopped when it was less than halfway done. There were a bunch of financial issues with Jeddah, which we won't get into here, but construction is about to get back underway now that those financial issues have been sorted. Maybe the same thing could happen with the line. Saudi Arabia could build part of the project, maybe that 2.4 kilometer stretch, and then finish the project later. As we said, that was kind of the plan from the start, to build the line in stages. But there's an important difference between Jeddah Tower and the line. Finishing Jeddah isn't expected to cost more than a billion dollars total, but finishing the line would cost closer to a trillion dollars. To show you just how crazy that is, Saudi Arabia could build another thousand Jeddah towers for roughly the same price as the line. If they've already struggled with one tower, how the heck are they going to build a thousand? So there's really only one option for them here. They'd need a lot of foreign investment. But to be honest, that's easier said than done. Apparently, just in the last few weeks alone, Saudi Arabia sent NEOM officials to Shanghai and Beijing, where they showed off images and animations of the line in the hopes of drumming up interest from foreign investors. But no major deals were agreed on, with the investors feeling unimpressed. After failing to get what they needed in China, NEOM officials are now planning to charter some private jets and fly in other bankers and investors from all around the world. Maybe some of them will throw in some cash, but a trillion dollars? Honestly, it doesn't feel likely here. Foreign investors just don't seem as impressed by the visions for NEOM and the line. They're nervous to invest in a country that just doesn't have a great track record when it comes to finishing projects. Jeddah Tower is a good example, along with the King Abdullah Economic City, a city project in the west of the country which was first announced back in 2005 but never properly finished. On top of this, a lot of investors are put off by Saudi Arabia's human rights record. A year ago, three local tribesmen were sentenced to death after they protested the fact that the line was cutting through their homeland. It's the kind of thing that potential investors don't really want to put their names to. Again, to reiterate, this downsizing isn't confirmed. Just a couple of weeks before the Bloomberg story, Neon posted an upbeat video about the line on their official YouTube channel. You know, people can start to see that this dream's turn into reality. But you kind of have to wonder whether Saudi Arabia is just worried to admit what's really going on here. The line and NEOM as a whole are important parts of Vision 2030. These mega projects are designed to catch the attention of the world, and if they're canceled or downsized, people might start to lose interest. Saudi Arabia can't let that happen, and maybe that's why they don't want to admit that the Bloomberg story is true. So what would this mini line look like anyway? It's worth pointing out that even a 2.4 kilometer line would still be pretty hard to build. Not as hard to build as the original version, but take a look at this. We said at the start that the full length line was like two rows of 3,000 One World Trade Centers. Well, even the mini line would be the equivalent of two rows of 40 One World Trade Centers. That's still a very ambitious project, especially when you consider the fact that it's also meant to be completely carless and totally renewable and supported by a system of cutting edge artificial intelligence. Of course, if they've decided to cut the length of the line, there's no guarantee that these other features won't be hit with reductions as well. Might Neom also be forced to reduce the height of the mini line just to make it more affordable or more realistic from an engineering perspective? Or worst of all, is there a chance that they could cancel this ambitious mega project entirely? And there's one more question to answer. Where would the mini line be built? There are a couple of likely options. As we said at the start, Saudi Arabia has already excavated more than 100 kilometers of land. In these satellite images from 2023, you can see a rough outline of these excavations. They start in the west, not far from the edge of the Gulf of Aqaba. Then they travel east, through deserts and mountains, before stopping in Shigri, a stretch of land between two mountain ranges. Again, you can see this on satellite images, a clear cutoff point where the excavation work stops. 
The mini line would probably be built somewhere between these two endpoints. I mean, why wouldn't you just use part of the already existing excavated foundations? We can rule out this stretch of 30 kilometers. It doesn't look as though the excavation work has started here yet, probably because the terrain is so rocky and mountainous. That leaves us with a 20 kilometer section to the east or a 100 kilometer section to the west. It's hard to be sure, but this western section feels much more likely, at least in our viewpoint. The rest of the NEON projects are all being built in and around the coastline, so it would make the most sense to build the mini line somewhere close to the rest of them. The most obvious spot would be right here, at the western end of the original excavation. In the original plans, the line actually had a hidden marina, a massive port for cruise ships. If they built the mini line right at this western point, that marina could still be included. And apparently they've already started digging this marina out. As of 2023, it was the largest excavation in the entire world, with roughly a million cubic meters of earth being moved from the site every single week. Again, building the mini line at this point would make sure that all pre-done excavation work wouldn't just go to waste. But there's also one other potential location for the mini line. A little further to the east, the original excavation works run close to the edge of the sea again, in an area known as Gayal. In the last couple of years, Saudi Arabia has built a town in this spot, the Neom community, complete with sports pitches, schools, mosques, offices, and of course, homes. Not far off the road, there's a second new town, which also has a sector for plants and factories, which are all designed to support the construction of the line. With these two towns nearby, maybe Gayal would actually be the most logical place to build the mini line. With even better access to workers and construction materials, it would be significantly easier to build there. It's also nicely positioned on the coast between Sindala Island and the Oxagon, a prime location for people looking to travel between Neom sites. We even managed to find this stretch of the original excavation site, which appears to be slightly deeper and more pronounced than the rest. There are hundreds and hundreds of vehicles nearby. This particular site, at least when these satellite images were taken, must surely have been one of the busiest spots along the entire length of the line. And guess what? We measured the length of this busy excavation site at 2.37 kilometers. Rounded up, that gives us 2.4, the same length, supposedly, as the mini line. Maybe that's just a coincidence, but let us know what you think. Do you think the line is really being downsized? And if so, where do you expect the mini line to be built? Let us know in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.